I know what you're thinking. Where is Miss Ganem? Why is she wearing a beanie that says Canada? What's with the background? Okay, first of all, I'm out of town because my kid has a soccer tournament. And it's cold. It's really cold here. I'm not in Canada though, so don't worry. But I need you, before you continue watching this video, before I give the hello Crippin Astronauts intro, I need you to go get the grown up or the big brother or big sister or whoever is in charge of helping you stay on task with Canvas assignments. I need that person to listen to this video that I'm about to give you because it's really important, okay? So go see if you can get them and sit them down and watch this video with you. If not, go ahead and watch it anyway. And then if you could show it to them later, that would be good. Okay, here's the intro. Hello, Crippin Astronauts. Uh, welcome back from Thanksgiving break. Uh, I know you didn't see a week, uh, a video for week seven, and that's okay. We don't actually have to have a, a video for week seven because what we're doing in the classroom right now is going to be the same for week seven, eight, and nine. So we're going to finish out the semester here with rodeo art. Rodeo art is a super exciting, neat opportunity for you to explore your creativity and possibly earn you a little bit of money for college. So I know that sounds a little far-fetched, but let me explain. This contest is sponsored by the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. And you may have heard about the rodeo, but just in case you haven't, let me show you a few clips about what the Houston Rodeo is all about. That was super cool, huh? So I don't know if you noticed, but it was mainly grown-ups there that were participating in there. Even, but I want to let you know that it's not just grown-ups. Kids can participate and compete in the rodeo as well. So here's a clip of a little bit of behind-the-scenes um, events that happen at the rodeo, as well as some of the things that kids can participate and compete in as well. Here at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, thousands of 4-H and FFA exhibitors gather to compete with the junior livestock they've raised. Two of these competing students are brothers, Lucas and Zachary Zarski. This is Lucas's second year presenting at the Houston Livestock Show, but he's already become a seasoned showman. Uh, I have Rocky Rose, BT, Cookies and Cream, and Cherry Berry. We get up and feed them in the morning, we have to them feed and hay, and then we come home and work with them in the night, we walk them around and stuff, then we feed them, 
you have to lead them around, teach them to set their feet up, make sure they gain weight. Sounds like a big responsibility, doesn't it? To be able to take care of an animal every day, more than one time in the day, and then make sure they're fed and that their stalls are cleaned and then walking them and then training them how to be presentable at the rodeo. And then a lot of the reason why these kids are doing this and why anybody participates in the rodeo is um, for one thing, um, it's just part of the uh, lifestyle and heritage here in the state of Texas. And then also it's a way of making a living, like bringing in income to help um, support the family. Um, and some kids even do this to help bring in money for college. And you might even know some friends of yours. You might could ask around, Have has anybody um, taken an animal to show to at the rodeo? You might find some friends that have done that. So there's one other kid activity that I think is so much fun to share with you all, and I'm sharing it with the kids in the classroom. It's mutton busting. All right, it's time to strap your children to farm animals and call it entertainment. It's mutton busting time. The royalty is in the arena, and it begins with Jackson Anderson of Seabrook, Texas. Let's see what Jackson can do, a six-year-old mutton buster. And very nice job to get us started with a great little wave. A six-year-old who loves sheep and wants to be a bull rider. Brindley, show us what you can do. One of the final contestants in tonight's Mutton Busted. Come on, Brindley. And Brindley all the way across, still going. Great job, Brindley. What a great way to round out night number one's Mutton Busted competition. Each and every one of our contestants, they're going to get a special prize from our Mutton Busting Committee and our sponsor. But one Mutton Buster rode a little bit farther, did it a little bit better, and tonight's champion is standing by with none other than Patty Smith. That's right, our champion was the last one that you just saw right there, Brentley Hardinger. Brentley. Boy, you got a lot of people cheering for you. Tell us how you were able to stay on that sheep for so long. I dig my feet in and I hold on top. That is the way to do it. Okay, wasn't that just so much fun to watch? And how about that champion? I love how um, when they lifted him up in the air, he just put his arms and legs up because he was so proud and excited for himself. So I bet you're now wondering, like, what does this all have to do with Art. Why is Miss Ganame telling us about the rodeo? It's because the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo also has a way that we all can participate as well. So um, I have a cat at home, but I don't know the slightest bit about raising farm animals, and, and maybe you don't either, or maybe you do. But I know something that I'm really good at, and, and I teach it well too, and, and I have some students who follow along with me and then we all learn this and it's art, right? We're all here for art. That's that's what brings us together. So the rodeo actually has an art contest that we can participate in. And you may already know this because we participate in this contest every school year as part of New Caney ISD's art program every year right before Christmas time. If you remember, we're always doing rodeo art, right? So it's not anything new. You probably have done this before if you're in first grade and up, okay? My kindergartners, this might be completely new for them, but everyone else has done rodeo art before. We just do it in the classroom. We don't go to the rodeo and then start painting and drawing there. We participate in the classroom. And then after that, um, our school picks 10 art samples and they represent our school at the New Caney ISD District Art Show at the beginning of January. And then after that, if we advance further, it goes to the rodeo. So if you are among the 10 students from Crippen Elementary that is chosen to represent our school at the New Caney ISD District Art Show on January 4th, if you win best of show, which is the top prize for elementary, or if you win gold, okay, that's the runner up, it's like the first place, okay? So if you win best of show or gold, then your artwork 
gets to advance on to the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo Contest, where you will be um, competing with hundreds of thousands of other kids from across the Houston area. And then among all of those chosen, there will be one elementary champion. So I know it seems like a long shot because Houston is huge. And there's 142 school districts that participate in the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo Student Art Contest. And 200,000 kids in all, and you're trying to compete for the top prize. But, you know, here's something really cool that I want to tell you. It is possible. It really is possible for you to advance on and then actually earn um, some money for the sale of your artwork. And then you get to keep a part of that for scholarship. And if you're not sure if Miss Ganame is really, you know, grounded in reality and being truthful, I want you to watch this, okay? Hang in there with me and just watch this next video. And, okay, <laughs> all right, and go. Hi, my name is Angel Rios and I'm in fifth grade and I'm the artist behind Kiss by the Moonlight. At first I didn't realize I won because I, I thought they skipped over my name. <laughs> Good. Good. And then at the end, I saw there were four trophies. Okay. And one of those could be mine. He's the champion trophy. They haven't called his name yet. I didn't realize that there were only two elementary kids there. And then at the end, when he said elementary champion, my heart was racing really fast. And I was so excited. Now we're moving on to our auction class champion. Our elementary class champion, lot number nine. Kissed by oh the Angel Rios. Ah. Woo! <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Me and my art teacher were talking about black horses, and then at one point we thought that it would be good a good uh, idea to to draw a black horse in the uh, black background. And in my drawing, I w we want to, we wanted it to look like it was uh it had life in the moonlight. It was reflecting life in the moonlight. We learned about Valiant in art class and we learned that using light and dark makes it makes things look pretty and more better. I'm only 10 years old, I'm only in 5th grade so I just like art really much. I'm not sure if I really want to be an artist when I grow up. Maybe yes, maybe no, I'm not sure. I want to thank my, my family for supporting me in the art project. I want to thank my art teacher, uh, Ms. Ghanem, for believing in me and for telling me what to do and actually helping me out there. I'm really excited about being a metric champion and about doing future art projects. I know this is the biggest art contest in the Houston area. I'm super proud and happy of myself for winning the whole thing. The whole entire thing for the metric. <laughs> High five. Boom. That to me is everything, y'all. Now, let me just tell you Miss Ganame doesn't care about champion trophies or medals or any of that stuff. The point in everything that I'm saying is that we're going to do art to explore our creativity and we're going to dream big and aim high in the process. If we win things, we win them. If we don't, the journey along the way, I'm sure we'll all gain something from it. Angel did go on to sell his artwork for $32,000 at the rodeo. And then because there is a limit as to how much the student can keep um, as far as elementary champion goes, it's the limit is $5,500. So he was actually able to keep $5,500 for himself and put that away in the bank for scholarship money in the future when he wants to go to college. And then the rest goes to supporting other students by scholarships and grants. So just like all the other kids that participate in the rodeo by raising animals and then bringing them to the rodeo to show and then auctioning them off, you guys have an opportunity to uh, present your artwork. And, you know, a lot of what we're doing anyway is just, you know, connecting more with our community because the rodeo, again, is a big part of Texas heritage. So why we're doing this, we're connecting with our community and the history of the state of Texas. And the rodeo is a big part of the heritage here in Texas. And this is our way of exploring our creativity while learning more about uh, the area that we live in and then 
benefiting the community as a whole because when we participate in things like this, uh, we give ourselves opportunities to advance and then we give other people a chance to share in the wealth. So in case you're kind of wondering, oh my gosh, does Miss Ganem expect me to draw like how Angel did? I'm, you know, that's, that's pretty intense. Well, the answer to that is absolutely not. Um, I know that there are kids at home uh, that are watching this video and their ages range from five years old all the way up to 11 or 12. So I've got my kindergartners through my fifth graders and um, Angel was able to do that under my guidance. So I was able to help guide him along the way and showed him something really hard to do called gritting. Some of the kids um, that are at school doing rodeo art are also doing gritting. Um, but I don't think that I can do that well for my remote learners. So I wanna give you some examples of some winning art that did not involve gritting at all. It involved their imagination and um, they all won best of show the last three years in a row and they were all my students. Here are their pictures. All three oh so different. And you may have recognized one of the faces there. That was Caden when he was in second grade. So the first uh, picture that was a, a winner from Crippen Elementary and that was right before I left and then I went over to New Caney Elementary and then that kid he was a fourth grader and then um, the next year after that at New Caney Elementary um, was also you know he the kid that I just featured Angel so each one of these kids was a winning art piece and they're also very different and the judges though they were the same judges all three times so it just goes to show you that you don't have to have a, a drawing of a horse that looks like a photograph in order for you to have great art what you see here though is that each student is expressing their creativity very differently So these girls that are featured here in this uh, in this image side by side are my students who won gold. Um, now gold is like the runner up to best of show. And so you have best of show is the uh, basically the grand champion of the district art show. And then right underneath that is gold. So if you get best of show or gold, then your artwork goes to the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo at NRG Arena where it will be um, competing against kids from the other districts in the area. And um, Miss Ganem just has to pinch herself sometimes because I can't believe that I had, you know, five students in the last three years make it all the way to rodeo. Um, again, it's not the thing that I personally care about the most. If I were to rank everything, number one would be having fun in art class. Number two would be learning about the elements and principles of art. Number three uh, would be like a combination of one and two where you're like making connections between having fun and learning the elements and principles. And then you're like, you know, growing your brain. It's growing and you're finding new ways to expand your creativity. And all of these light bulbs are going off everywhere because you're so excited about all the things that you're creating and learning. And then somewhere down way at the bottom of the list of about, you know, a hundred or plus more things is winning a trophy. Yeah, it's cool. It's bragging rights. It's a flex as the kids like to say, but that's not the most important thing. Are you having fun? Are you learning? Are you making connections? Are you feeling good about yourself? Are you feeling good about your art? You know, are the sparks going off in your brain and everything just feels like it's super exciting and you're learning and growing that's awesome and i guess if you happen to win a trophy or a medal and earn some scholarship money in the process that's awesome too but it's not it's not our end goal right we've got more important things to consider so by uh next sunday so about a week from now, uh, I'm gonna have, you know, the first part of your artwork due in Canvas so that I can see how far you've progressed. 
Um, and that is just so that I can see that maybe, just maybe, one of my remote learners, such as yourself, could be one of the 10 representatives that goes on to the New Kenny ISD District Art Show and represents Crippen Elementary. I want to give my remote learners that opportunity as well. So that's why I'm going to have um, a progress uh, check that's going to be basically an assignment. Take a picture of how far you've gotten in your in your lesson and then send it to me. And then if I think it's something that's super promising and has a really good chance, then I'm going to reach out to you directly and um, we're going to communicate about how we can possibly get yours in the district art show. Um, make sure that a grown-up watches this video. I also want you to make sure that a grown-up watches the next video that I'm about to post right underneath this one. It's going to be two videos in the same Canvas lesson. Um, and then the next one that I'm about to post is going to be about the rules and procedures and how to go about uh, getting your inspiration and starting your artwork. It's really important that the grown-up who helps you with Canvas watches this video and the next um, so that you can have a fair chance at participating in the contest in a way that um, is just as equal and fair as the kids that are here in the classroom with me. Okay, so the next video is coming up. Um, thank you for watching this entire video. If you need to replay it for your grown up at home, please do. And I will see you in just a moment with rules and procedures.